obsessed and undeniable are two of my favorite words in this industry <laughs> because I feel like those are the things you need to be to, to be able to make it in. They think about what they want to do and they yeah. think in the future and they just work towards that. And I feel like things has just happened to me. Manifesting. Uh, yeah, exactly. Manifesting. This is nothing. How did this, you know, and then you work on a project yeah. for 200 hours and you post it and it's like, how does this not get anything? Like, I um, know. So I get that so much. For anyone that might not know Annabelle, she's a senior 3D artist at Reflector Studio, mentor at Art Heroes and college BDEB. You make tutorials involving some of your own 3D projects and are currently killing it in the social media game. <laughs> I yeah. think that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, senior, that's actually quite recent. Uh, I've just received oh, yeah? my title this summer. Yeah, finally. Thank you. <laughs> but did you start there as a mid or? Uh, I actually started there as a junior. It's been oh, cool. almost five years I've been to Reflector. Yeah, uh, this very start of the project. I don't know if you've seen like um, what we're working on, but it's basically Unknown 9. It's kind of like the first game out of this studio. So I've cool. been through like the whole process <laughs> of making making this game become a reality is there a lot of is there a lot of stuff out about it at the moment like have they got a lot of promotional um i like sometimes check their reels but to be honest like i'm trying not to look too much into it just because sure. like i try to like separate myself as much as possible and then i want to mm. like receive it kind of like as the audience and you know not have too much expectations about it i'm really mm. i don't know like it's my first game so I'm like trying to stay like calm about it and stuff and just see how like people, but I'm excited about it nonetheless. Like, I don't think I can hide that. So you've just been doing character art for the game. Like you haven't, is, is that sort of been the focus for you? Yeah, I, so, okay. I've been really lucky because um, as I was like talking to you, like before we started, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. before getting in the studio, I was a student. And so I did like, the college I'm uh, teaching at at the moment was the college where I was studying. And so oh, wow. when I finished at the time, we were only like as the final project, we were making movies and the program has changed a lot. Now it's like very much more focused on like what you want to do specifically. But at the time we were doing like everything like animation and characters, yeah. environment, all of it. So wow. at the end of my college years, I didn't have like much to show in terms of characters. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I, I really need to, you know, have a few months just work specifically on my portfolio and then apply for a studio. And so while yeah. I was like working on my portfolio, I was like reaching out to all these people on LinkedIn, on ArtStation, like asking for feedback, like being that annoying person, basically. Yeah. Like just, you know, you have to be. Anybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so my lead is the one who kind of like amongst other people i have to say but he's the yeah. one like who really took me on and just like you know was really invested in like teaching me and when i finished my second character because i had done two characters at the time he was like oh i'm ready to like recommend you at the studio at the time he was working at ubisoft but then he switched to reflector so the studio i'm at right now i mean thanks to him uh, I got the job at Reflector and from the start he was like yeah you're very lucky because had you been at Ubisoft you would not have been able probably to do entire characters um, because yeah. I feel like from what I hear anyways like a lot of people in bigger studios like they work on individual assets you know and just kind of like build a character that way yeah but yep. at Reflector we really have like one character that's set for us and then we do it from start to finish that so, is right yeah but yeah so basically from that i think that's really what like got me better it's just like i was able yeah. to do everything from you know scratch to finish yeah yeah i was very lucky in that oh that's awesome yeah I, i've really only heard of a couple of studios that are, are like that which and they're not the biggest studios they're where really? you do get you get a project and you can and you can do it a similar way that you that you have but yeah now it's 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 really cool that you've got somewhere that you know you've been able to cut your teeth so sort of doing that you know like and have someone that's there to support you through it as well yeah exactly because also like i remember when i was in college and i was like talking to my teachers about like maybe after college like because the choice is sort of like 
you either continue to university because Montreal is a bit different, but so you have college and then you have university. A lot of people, what they did is like after college, they go to university and they work on their portfolio. But the thing is, you're kind of like redoing the same thing as like what you were doing in college. And so I was not really interested in that. I knew I wanted to make characters. I was talking about, about it with my teacher and he was like, yeah, I mean, you could go on your own and work on your portfolio because if you do like look for a job in the industry that's not necessarily characters probably like get tired of like working and then at night just work on your portfolio and just yeah. try to make characters um i don't know how it it was actually for you because like you actually also have your own job and then you're also like doing characters on the side yeah i, th I think it's it, it comes down to that drive right like it's where yeah. you, you sort of you get to a point where you realize that you're not going to get anywhere unless you put in that extra work because yeah. the, it, it's sort of not really like another any other field where you know you go to uni you do the thing you get the piece of paper you go out and then you just kind of wait around until someone takes you it's because it's so competitive i mean you know this as well because it's so competitive you need to be it's it's almost like it's a skill set in itself that you need to be that extra person that extra level above yeah. so it's just like you could be as good as anyone else but it's like we want to look for the person that's undeniable which is a word that i've used obsessed and undeniable are two of my favorite words in this industry <laughs> because i feel like those are the things you need to be to, to be able to make it in it's not a bad segue really on it because i was I wanted to talk to you about like obviously your skill set and your technical skill set's amazing right but i think something that that i wanted to touch on is your entrepreneurship outside of mm. outside of your work it takes a lot extra to get into that like when you've already you feel like you've already got the job but you know to be able to say hey i want to be able to put so much more effort into you know outside of work what what's your main driver for that i think i just don't know what to do with myself sometimes <laughs> and <laughs> It's almost like maybe it's a little bit like what you were saying, like being obsessed. It's like like when yeah. I don't have something to do, I'm like, I, I can't help it. I'm like, I need to do something. And so I just like look for stuff to do. But I think for myself, like, I don't know if it's also what do they say? It's not projecting. It's I always forget the word. It's very it's kind of like this trend where people are like they think about what they want to do and they yeah like in the future and they just work towards that and i feel like things has just happened to me manifesting um, yeah exactly manifesting yeah like yeah, yeah. it's not even that i did it like intentionally but yeah. it's just like i always knew i liked teaching and so when i was in school you know when people needed help i like to be around and be like yo i can help you and stuff and so i've always wanted to be a teacher at some point and i feel like i don't know how life happens sometimes but like some people know someone else and then they're like hey do you want to teach and i'm like mm. yeah sure i want to do it and then it kind of progresses that way another thing like you were saying is social media i feel like is kind of like projecting you in a way that you don't imagine so for yeah. art heroes i was making those youtube videos you know and i think they were trying to, yeah they were trying to find someone for a hair card course they were like looking online for someone to give the course and then they kind of fell upon my youtube channel and so that's really how they you know they reached out to me they were like yo we saw that you have a youtube channel you're, you're like teaching and stuff we're looking oh, really? for somebody yeah and then they were like yeah. we're looking for somebody to give this course are you interested and i was like yeah sure like let's do it um yeah. so and i don't know like also when i took because i took a big break um for like a few months off of social media because it kind of became a lot for me when i did that there there were a few people who reached out and they were like, hey, um, I kind of miss your videos. Like, uh, could you come back? When are you coming back and stuff? And that's yeah. kind of like when I realized that how much social media like get a grip of people, like how far it can get you. Cause yeah, like I said, for art heroes, it was that way, but for other opportunities as well in the past, I think it was through social media that I had gotten that attention. But to go back to your, I guess, initial question. Um, but yeah, I was just saying like, I think it's just, I like doing stuff and I like to keep yeah. myself busy and that's how I like 
get those jobs essentially <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean the social media thing right because i feel like it's it's almost like a game in itself it's, it's a business in yeah. itself right i've i've found that i'm sure that you know after having a bit of a hiatus you went through it yourself you almost need to sort of play the game of social media right where you can see people that have social media accounts where you're like they're feeding the algorithm they're doing everything mm. that they have to do to feed the algorithm right there's the other side of it as well which is being genuine to yourself and and what you want to be putting out there in the world and i feel like there's a fine line between because everyone has to play the game in some way and yeah. also you want to be doing it to have you know the creative genuineness that you have that you have in yourself as well so there's a fine line between it how do you walk that line because I, f I feel like you do it really well and all the people that i you know look up to social media wise and and you know that have paved the path they all have a very they all walk the same line i feel Ooh, that's a really hard question i almost want to mm. ask you how you do it and then <laughs> like but I feel like for myself, what I realized when I took that hiatus, I was putting a lot of stress on putting out content yep. and be truthful. Like I was trying to combine the two, you know, the algorithm and just like, I want to say quality, but just like the true content that I want to make. And yep. I realized towards the end, like, uh, I don't know that I was like trying so hard to find content to do out of 3D mm. that I was like burning myself out to the point where going on my Instagram, like art account, was really stressful to me. Like I was yeah. seeing those reels, I was seeing that content and I couldn't do it. And so, I mean, apart from like posting, I was also off completely off of my art account altogether. Yeah. And so during those few months out of it, I was thinking like, okay, what should I do differently? What should I, how should I come back? Cause I don't want to, like you were saying, it's, if it's a game, I need to have fun with it. I need to enjoy the process. And there was a moment yeah. where I was enjoying the process. I think especially before Instagram's become like such a big uh, influencers game and you know, all of that, yeah. you know, I thought about it and I was thinking, okay, first of all, I need to not pressure myself fitting a specific schedule. Cause you know how like on Instagram, you'll see all these reels about like post three times a day, um, post mm. a reel, post this, post that. Like, and so I didn't want to do that. I don't want to force myself to create content so that was the first thing and then the second thing is I want to post things that I would be interested in watching so I think those two things mainly is like just not try to fit that algorithm like of course I think like I need to force myself to post like because if it were just for me I would probably like I don't know just scroll <laughs> yeah, yeah, on yeah. Instagram loophole you know so I still need to have that mindset of like okay let's aim for next week posting something yeah. but I'm not gonna kill myself like trying to post something every day or every week you know yeah I, th well, I think that, well for me like that is yeah. where the issue gets. I wanted it to be second. I wanted it to be a second thing mm. to the art, right? Like I wanted yeah. to do my thing and then go, okay, here's 90% of my effort. And uh, here's my Instagram where I put 10% stuff I've recorded and clipped out and show the world and stuff. And then it gets to this, you start building a brand and you start having formats and segments and, and starting to do all this stuff. And then I, I went through it as well, where I'm like, I'm doing 50, I'm doing almost more social media work, editing and coming up with ideas and clipping yeah. stuff up than the actual thing that got me to the dance you know like where so it's it, that's another line that you can sort of need to walk where it's like what is more important to you oh my god <laughs> i relate yeah. to that a lot especially okay yeah amongst the things i did i mean other than like reflecting on social media during that hiatus is also thinking like realizing actually that okay all that time that i was putting into like you were saying editing you know i was also putting aside my portfolio and then i realized like okay i can't be making videos giving tips on how to make characters if myself like i myself are not am not working on my portfolio and like making characters and like for sure actually yeah, yeah and upgrading my skills i'm gonna be stuck at the same level forever if i do that yeah. and so i feel like taking that time off and just like focusing complete completely on the well the character that i made like recently i don't know was just like very refreshing very like and also like i remember towards the end of production of this character i was like oh maybe i should tease it maybe i should post about it like yeah and then i was like no no no, no. let's not do that if i do that then i'm gonna start wanting to post more i'm gonna go back and not train and it's not yep. the time yet so yeah i don't know how like i wonder for you when you're working on the character are you like forcing yourself almost 
to finish it earlier than you wanted to just to make a post about it. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I have a bit of a different, I had a different pressure when it came to okay. the, the additional stuff from around a project. My Instagram didn't exist six months ago. Okay. My first, my real, like you can actually look at how many months it's been since I started doing character art stuff on there. And it's January this year. Like my biggest thing was recording. I wanted to do YouTube. YouTube was like my thing <laughs> where I'm like, okay, I want to build the YouTube up. Then I realized that it is extremely difficult to just go basically cold into YouTube and go, I'm just going to start uploading stuff. And I got a lot of advice on it being, you know, which is, you know, the usual stuff. Just don't think, just get it up. You know, your first 10 videos are going to suck. So you may as well just get them up there and then start, you know, finding your feet a little bit more. I, f I just, I was like, I need another outlet. I needed another outlet of, mm. of something to get out there. And then I started posting moving viewport stuff and doing other things that aren't, that I don't really think are that interesting. And then you post it on Instagram and it's like, it has 20,000 views. And it's like, this is nothing. How did this, <laughs> you know? And then you work on a project yeah. for 200 hours and <laughs> you post it. And it's like, how does this not get anything? Like, I um, know. <laughs> so I, I get that yeah, so much. Yeah, so I just, you can't really work it out. So I kind of don't really like to fall into it purely because it's it's not, it's a fun secondary thing. I don't ever want it to really be the main thing, but it's mm -hmm. like you said, it got you opportunities for work. And it's basically my driver right now is to show everyone that I exist and what level I'm at. And, and that's about it. Yeah, just another portfolio really. That's crazy because I mean, talking about portfolios, like a lot of people are asking like, oh, what should I do for my portfolio? Should I get myself out there? And I feel like nowadays social media plays a lot. Yeah, massively, like, yeah. Yeah, because if you just post on, I mean, you can definitely just post on our station and I mean, just apply like a normal person would do. But yeah. I feel like if you give yourself this extra fuel or whatever, like it mm. can get you further. Like can some people could see you uh, that you didn't intend them to see and then they can get you somewhere you didn't expect as well. Well, it was fun. So, it's funny that the last project that I did was the yeah. likeness of a of an actual athlete yeah and he commented on the post and oh he's my like God, one of my, yeah he's like one of my idols and i was just like this is crazy like and it never would have happened unless i posted it on social media wow oh my god he actually messaged me as well and said it was awesome and i was like this is crazy like yeah so power yeah. of social media i guess yeah i mean who knows maybe he's gonna want to use your model at some point <laughs> for promotion <laughs> be, or whatever uh, crazy things have happened you know you you just need to put yourself in those scenarios to be able to to make stuff happen even though you think man i never would have thought in a million years that that would happen but yeah good segue to jojo i guess i mean that is Oh, I'm yeah. <laughs> so I'm so glad that we had been you know messaging and I reached out to you before you posted that because then it would have seemed like I just wanted to piggyback onto whatever <laughs> you were doing because as soon as you posted it afterwards I was like that's really good I asked her before because this is sick <laughs> oh I don't know I've like <laughs> stayed off of our station as well like oh, really? thank you yeah because all of that is stressing me out so much like I'm trying to back off it's really fun I mean I'm really glad to hear it like honestly because yeah. I, I think beforehand I was so like oh my god is this thing doing well and like trying to see where it's going but I'm really happy that it's doing well and stuff uh, yeah yeah but thank you so much yeah I've worked a whole lot on this one so I was actually chatting to someone about it and really was yeah, and they're not an unreal person. So they were like, yeah, it looks like a lot of work and stuff. They're a character artist, but they're not into into unreal. And I said, I was like, I've used a lot of unreal. And what she's done here is very, very impressive. Like to be oh. able to go through. <laughs> it's the skill set that we were talking about before, right? Where it's the end-to-end -end model texture present cool most people can do that you start you start introducing elements of rigging not just metahuman pull out reskin custom rigging to the clothes as well like that yeah. is very impressive thank you so much yeah i mean yeah. i feel like all of my past work were kind of like the build up to this one in a way because yep. i think the first project i ever worked on with meta human was the katniss character that i had done and okay, so what yeah. i did was simply like take the base mesh just do a likeness i don't know i feel like at the time i just wanted the, the base texture and just work out of that and you know make something out of it and then i was like yo yeah. i can actually modify her face like create an expression and so yeah, from yeah. there for my next project which was ksi this time i'm actually gonna rig it completely and since it's a very simple character, you know, it's just a short basically that he has on and yeah. hair and stuff. I was like, this is going to be easy. So let's do it. And that worked out pretty well. And so my ambition got higher and I was like, this time 
I'm gonna do an entire character and I don't know if you saw I don't know if you could call it a plugin but it's called Metapipe and I've seen it I, yeah yeah so when I saw this on LinkedIn I was like this is what I need <laughs> this is you what use I need Metapipe to use for it I I use Metapipe for it but I use the free version because I'm a pretty cheap person <laughs> like, <laughs> I will always try to find the cheapest way to make my work like I don't want to spend a whole lot of money um, yeah why would you yeah exactly so I try to figure out like how to do it and you know not spend a whole lot of money yeah and it worked out pretty well like super easy well super easy it's now easy to say that but at the time yeah. it was really hard to figure out because I didn't understand how how should I say when I was trying to rig my character originally just using Maya and mm. rigging the face and putting it back in Unreal Engine, it would never work the same way a normal meta human would work. So the animation yep. like just wouldn't apply. Yeah. yeah. So I was talking with actually another teacher at Collège de Boulogne, which is B the B the B. Uh, yeah. In my bio. Yeah. And we were talking about it, and she was like, "Yeah, no, you need like to transfer the." Um, the DNA of a meta human into another one to make it work. You're giving me you're giving me PTSD right now. <laughs> I've been through all this. It's it's crazy. I know it's yeah. They do not make it easy. Yeah no. And so when I like, realized that I was like, oh my god, all this time I put in other work because KSI for him it was kind of like a roundabout way to make it work because I didn't yeah. have the DNA at all. I just mm -hmm. had to. I found another plugin which was. I could animate him within Maya, and that's how I could get the yep, animation yep. of his face. But for Jojo, it was actually within, you know, Unreal, within the app, all of that. Um, but yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, I had worked on the face, and then you put the animation in, all of that, and then you realize, yeah. oh, it would be cool if the cloth were moving with her. Yeah. And so that's another thing that your ambition get higher and higher, and yeah, it's just kind of like all the, I, I feel like you probably have that experience as well, but of course you start yeah. on something and then you want to aim higher and then it just never yeah. ends. Talk about things that are skills and that are like intangible skills. I think that that is also another one. Like the old saying of, you know, art's never finished. It's merely abandoned. Like you need to, I yeah. feel like there's a skill set in being able to go, you know what? I'm just going to do like that last character I was just talking about of mine. I didn't want to do a bust. I was like, it was taking every fiber of my being just to be like, don't do the body, don't do the body. And I'm like, I can't <laughs> post this. I can't post it if it's just a bust. Like it just seemed seemed weird to me. And I was like, just put it up. It doesn't matter. Just get it out the door because I, you know, I didn't have enough time. And so you need to know when to call it eventually. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a skill. And I feel like, I don't know, sometimes it's a good thing to call it quit because then you yeah. just get tired of working on it. And I feel like it doesn't get that much better. I don't know how to say it. I've just had that experience. Um, I remember there's the my Anakin character um, in my portfolio where if you had seen what it looked like before, you would be horrified. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> and so <laughs> I had didn't know what to do about it. The only reason why I got to the level it was is because I reached out to someone else and they had like given me feedback. You know, that's how I could get it better. But point is like I could have worked on this like forever, not make it that much better because at the end of it I was just tired. I just didn't know what to do with it. I was mm. and sometimes it's good to just use the skills you've learned from the previous project and use it for the next one. You know, it's like fresh and so you won't get tired and it will be much like easier and faster for you to create the next project. That's that's a great takeaway. I think the, you know, seeing somebody giving you advice on something, it, it, it should be seen as a shortcut. In my in my eyes, it's oh, yeah. exactly what you're saying because you could be spinning the wheels yourself, just doing it, doing it, doing it. You're only ever going to improve it as much as what your brain is capable of improving it as. As soon as you introduce someone else into it and then they say something and you're like, if you're open to accepting it, it's like, it's just free plussing. Like, and, and I just think when you can, and it does take time. I wasn't always like that. I'm sure you weren't either you know learning to park the ego because you're so attached yeah. to something and because it's hard it's like that's that's another skill where it's just like if you can nail that sky's the limit you know like as far as getting better i actually have a question for you i was wondering do you ever think you're gonna live stream like sculpting that's very funny i have i spoke to someone about that today that really works at, that works at maxon and they want to do some stuff so yeah why <laughs> <laughs> 
Because like that's something I was doing like very early on. And okay, yeah, yeah. I remember it stressing me. I don't want to actually. I don't want to stress you out about it. I don't want to get stressed that. out about it. Okay, no. good. But yeah. something that was stressing me out about it is half people see me uh, working on something that isn't finished, mm. and them thinking like, "Oh, wow, like sh this is not looking good." Like you know what I mean? Like they they don't 100%. see the final result. And so I remember when I was doing it, I was like trying to speak so much, like filling the air basically. Mm. And I was not focusing on my scope at all. And then I was like kind of like going into that cycle where I need to entertain people, but at the same yep. time, I'm not, I can't focus on my sculpting. And so I was thinking like, oh, I'm gonna say I'm focusing on talking rather than sculpting. Just to excuse yeah, yeah. the fact that <laughs> my work is not looking great at the moment. Yeah, I've done a couple of lives on my YouTube, which were you did. It was like a Z modeler stuff, like, and it was okay. just chill thing. But the same thing, it's like more people start coming in and asking questions, and it's like before you know it, you're like, I'm not even concentrating on what I'm doing. It's I'm too yeah. busy trying to entertain these. You throw on a party, you know, you're trying to entertain them. It's like, yeah, it's hard. Exactly. It's kind of like social media. <laughs> I mean, it it is the same, but like <laughs> you're so trying to be the buff, the buffon, the how do you call it, the clown? You know, talk, make videos, whatever, yeah. and then you <laughs> forget about your art, and so yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of it's it's doing the opposite effect of of what you wanted, you know. But with the teaching, was that always something? Like, I know that for me, I don't even consider myself a teacher, right? Like, I like telling people what I I'd love to teach, and I feel like I could, and I feel like it takes a specific type of person to do it. Like, you obviously are that person as well. Was teaching always something that you had, or did you almost discover it? in this process where you were like, hey, I actually like the way that passing on knowledge to other people makes me feel and I actually really enjoy it. That's a good question. Well, I think a little bit like what I said earlier, I think just in school, I really liked passing on like information, helping. I feel like, I don't know, seeing the reaction from people and being like thankful, you kind of like, mm. I don't know if it's an ego thing, but like you feel great about yourself. You feel like you did something good maybe i feel like also by teaching you're learning so much as well at the same time like even Massively. in college exactly yeah and yeah i mean other than just like learning it's also solidifying what you already know you have to explain it in a way that someone else will understand if you can't explain it in a clear manner i feel like it's because you don't understand it clearly yourself so i think that's all of that is what i really liked and I wanted to say also when I was like teaching in, in college, sometimes some students would ask me like questions that I didn't have the answer to. Mm. And so I had to look it up for myself. And sometimes they would come up with the answer and I would learn something out of it. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like this exchange uh, when you're teaching. It's like, yeah, you're giving, but the students as well are giving a lot with their yeah. questions and with yeah all of their curiosity. Because I feel like also in the industry, unfortunately, sometimes some people have some egos. And so... <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so it's almost like they, they're not ready sometimes to learn. And they're just like, I know everything, you know, or yeah. my way of doing is the best way of doing it. But when you're with students who just got into the industry, who are just like, so they don't have a specific software assigned to them. They don't have anything that they know specifically, specifically that they like to do. So it's kind yeah. of like so open and yeah, that's what yeah. I like about it. Yeah. It's a fun platform, right? Like to be in that spot, but you nailed it. Like it's not about knowing everything. Like the teacher to me, all the best teachers I've ever had, they didn't know everything. They, yeah. they if anything, they were good listeners. They were good communicators. They were good, all the skills that, and they cared. Like, you know, I, I went to a, a school, a 3D school, 2011, like was oh, when wow. I started. That was when 3D schools were not really like a thing in Australia. And, you know, teach them After Effects and stuff. I'm like, I don't even, gonna use, I don't need to know this. Like, I want to be a character artist, you know? And I just feel like if there was a little bit more you know attention and care and communication like all those skills they might not even be the best teacher for that job but it's like if they sit you down they're like okay what do you want to do like, oh i want to do this 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 oh, okay i know this person that can help you with this like i had so many of those types of conversations where it was like you can't help me but you are so helpful that you're going to mm. point me in the direction of help or you're going to you're going to say give me five minutes and i'll go learn it and, I'll, and then i'll 
communicated to you or something like that. Good teachers can adapt to anything, like to any situation, which I, yeah, I think that's, that's the best teachers that I've seen. Yeah. And I don't know if that was your experience as well when you were a student, but during my last year of college, um, when we had to do that movie, yeah. we had to kind of like come up with a solution ourselves. You're kind of like going to your teacher, hoping that this savant who knows everything. Yeah. And then you realize like, oh, how come they don't have that answer for that specific problem? Like, and you're kind of upset at immediately. First. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then you realize like, oh, there's no way they could know <laughs> everything, mm. you know? So yeah, I'm kind of like surprised you don't consider yourself a teacher considering all those videos you're making because you're teaching people, you know? Yeah, this is probably where that fear creeps in a little bit because mm. I think I think when you label yourself a teacher, you're up for scrutiny. But if I'm sitting back and I'm just like, hey, this is some stuff I know. Listen if you want to listen. If you don't want to listen, don't. I'm not a teacher. I'm just a person that's doing <laughs> stuff. Even though I do consider myself, and I have helped, I have tutored, mentored heaps of people in the Discord. People hit me up all the time. Like I'm always, and I love it. I, I know exactly the feeling that you're talking about. I didn't know that I ever wanted to do that. I, I genuinely didn't. It was only until I, I was obsessed with this craft and wanting to be better myself and then I wanted other people to be better as well and I love the feeling of helping people get better um, it's definitely something that I want to tap into uh, probably more professionally in the future where being a teacher absolutely yeah I mean I, I it's like you said it before you said it without even saying it you know like it's you just care and you want you love the feeling of and I don't think it's a selfish thing I think it's it's like giving money to charity and then saying are you a bad person because it made you feel good that you gave money to charity you're still giving the money to charity you know yeah. like, but, <laughs> but it's it's the same thing it's like well, who cares if you feel good about helping someone else I just think that's a win-win that's true I mean yeah, yeah I think you got a point in that now that I think about it because you mentioned your discord how do you manage all of that i'm realizing you have your youtube you have your instagram you have your discord it just kind of runs itself i mean i had a couple of guys that helped me with it when i was starting like okay. it was i i set up the whole thing myself but then I, I made a couple of guys that i met in the industry that i trusted they were again kind of you know young guys one of the guys i actually helped get a job he was a character artist and i helped him he'll he'll watch this and he'll probably comment on it and he would be like because he's he's working at ubisoft at the moment wow and i helped him for about a year getting his portfolio and i was he was really really good at receiving information he got frustrated at some times as we all do you know like i it was it, this is the perfect summary of what we were talking about before he really took it on so well to the point where he got an internship there and now is on a contract oh. role in in montreal in oh he's in canada yeah 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 Oh, really? Yeah. I, like he, you know, we would send voice notes to each other and stuff. And it, it was, he, 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 him and a couple other guys helped sort of run the Discord and everything. Discord sort of ticks over itself. It's just a fun little platform for everyone to post things. Um, I wish I could take it more, you know, like have someone moderate it a little bit better and do competitions. I'd love to do a competition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some funky things in the pipeline, you know, some companies I've been talking to and stuff, which then, you know, you run a competition and you got prizes and then it's, you know, it becomes a little bit more legit, you know, like, and I think that that's something that I'd really like to be doing because people get better. And I think that's kind of the crux of, of what we've both been talking about is where it's, it all just comes down to doing the thing and wanting to get better at doing the thing. That is crazy because you were talking about, I don't know, I feel like being a 3D artist at the end of the day is yeah all of what you were mentioning it's kind of like you need to be an artist you need to be an entrepreneur as you were saying like to get your yep. work out there you need to be doing so many things at the end of the day and yeah. it kind of gets you wondering like how do you do all of that i'm really impressed by the way by like all of your work especially you were saying you started in january for the social for the instagram yeah instagram yeah like it's really crazy yeah. that you got that far with it yeah yeah it happened real quick it's hard work i was I, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day this was another thing that, that stuck with me and i think it will with you as well when have you ever failed <laughs> at something <laughs> that you've that you've put a hundred percent effort into mm, and i was thinking that's true every time i've ever real like genuinely given a hundred percent of myself to something i've ended up on top if you always think that it's like if i give this a hundred percent odds are i'm probably gonna do pretty well <laughs> it kind of it makes me think of a story Mm, again when I was a student so again it was the end of the year I knew I wanted to do characters but again I didn't have any characters really in my portfolio or they were just like 
purple. Yeah. And so I was talking to this other teacher and I was telling him about, I want to apply for characters. That's what, something I want to do. This teacher specifically, like he was kind of like discouraging in a way because mm. he had said, oh, there's a lot of competition in characters. It's going to be very difficult. You might as well apply for environments and then make characters on the side. Yeah. I didn't like that answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I see myself like, well, internally, you're like, no, I see myself doing characters. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I don't know how to say it otherwise, but it's almost like destiny because do you know the Facebook group called 10K? Anyways, mm, I don't think it's so, kind no. of like, it's a 3D art group in uh, Facebook yeah. on which I was recommended to post on it. And when I was working on my first character, which is not on my portfolio anymore, by the way, but when I was working yeah. on it at the time, I was like, oh, I'm going to post on it and just see. I don't know how to say it. It was either if I can get feedback out of that Facebook group, I'll make it on my own. But if I don't, then it's going to be hard. Yeah. And I posted on it and I don't know how it got so much attention because in hindsight, when I go have a look at it, like nowadays, I'm like, yeah. this face is horrendous. Yeah, but it yeah. got so much attention for some reason. I don't know if it's, if it's the timing or whatever. And You'll have to send it like, to me. I want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I would be embarrassed, but I can definitely send it to you. And yeah, at the time, I was like, oh, I'm actually good at this. Like, I'm going to continue, you know, like working on my own. And I yeah, think yeah. that got me the motivation to continue like working on the character and actually not apply for environment as suggested and oh, you know, wow. putting all of my effort. But yeah, and like you were saying, just like believing in yourself and putting your 100%, even if somebody tells you otherwise, I yeah. think is key to like, yeah, getting better and getting a job, like believing in yourself. Well, backing yourself, I mean, that's it, it's kind of been the theme of this whole thing, right? Like whether it's whether it's bettering yourself, asking someone for help and knowing you're not, you don't suck. It's like, you know, know that you're going to get better, putting yourself out there in social media, like, okay, I know what I'm doing is good, or I know what I'm doing. I'm doing it for this reason. So whatever, how many thumbs downs or, you know, comments of people that for the most part, our, I've found that our, you know, quite small industry is actually quite supportive. Like if you look at all, I've very rarely, if ever, received a negative comment or like anything really that bad. Like I think one thing that I'm going to speak for the two of us that we have to remember <laughs> is I once saw, I think, Rafael Grassetti post yep. about a bad comment he had gotten on one of his art. And so when I saw that, I was like, if even like big names like him can get... yeah bad comments it really doesn't mean much you know if you do get one totally it's almost like i don't want to say who are they <laughs> to yeah, yeah, yeah. comment but it's almost like first of all at least you're doing something you're creating art and you're gonna get better for sure second yeah. we already know you're good at doing what you're doing third i mean i feel like usually the people who comment like bad things it's almost like they don't have anything else to do like why would you take time to comment on yeah. someone else's art you know um yeah but yeah i think like i said if someone big as big as him can get like a bad comment i feel like it really doesn't mean anything at the end of the day like the like, literal oh. you know the goat of our industry exactly yeah. <clears throat> yeah but i can get like how because i think for one of i don't think it was art it, i think it was like a reel that i had made about yeah. like 3d apps or something and i think because it got a lot of attention of course, that brings a lot more people to see it. And I had gotten some, you know, comments that were, I guess you could say questionable. Yeah. And it, it kind of hits you when you do get those comment comments because you're not used to it. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy how kind of like the one negative comment can kind of like hinder the rest of the positive. Massively. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel like it's kind of like learning as well to take those comments. I feel like also for you, like if you're going to get super big, in this platform it's going to be to learn <laughs> to yeah. take comments like this because yeah, oh yeah might... definitely yeah, yeah no there's the, the youtube the youtube ones it's like like you said there's 90 97 percent or positive and then there's just like you know one thing and it well that doesn't discount all the good stuff that people have been saying you know that doesn't make the, the good people wrong that like they, they don't have an incorrect opinion it's just someone else is different but it's like the critiquing thing you know like once upon a time we were probably pretty precious and had egos and all that kind of stuff and i think you just need to ad adapt the same thing to this it's just where it's like cool that's your opinion whatever and and for yeah. the most part i think you know i think you're navigating it pretty well and i i like to think that i am as well because i don't 
I don't hate it yet. So um, <laughs> I think this is this is a, a good way, I reckon, to wrap this up. In five years' time, mm. what does Annabelle enterprises look like what does the what does the studio look like what does the future look like in five years you know in the past maybe i would have told you oh i'm aiming for a higher position like lead within my studio or something like that but yeah i don't even think that's what i'm aiming for anymore because i've realized that lead comes with a lot of responsibilities and yeah, management yeah. mostly than making art although i don't want to take it as seriously i really enjoy social media posting i feel like i want to get more into that in the future for cool. sure but in a way that can sustain me where i can still make art and have this on the side to kind of like i don't know how to say it. it's almost like i don't know that i would want to be in the game industry forever i like making characters i like making 3d art especially with my last character i've come to realize that the freedom you have of making your own thing is giving me a lot more than working for something that isn't completely mine if i can find a way to do that to create art for myself and like live out of that that would be great but who knows? We'll see. You somehow managed to take exactly my perspective of this whole thing really? where it's like, well, it's, it becomes, it comes down to creative control. Like, and I think that that's, that's the biggest thing, right? Like being able to dictate to me, that's what it sounds like you want where, where it's like, I just want to be able to be okay with this part of my life and that's cool but it's not the be all it's not all the eggs aren't in that basket you know it's like if you put everything in there and that thing falls you're going to be upset because everything's in there so it's like it's a smart decision i think it's a really good, good way to look at it is to build your own sort of thing on the outside and have cre that creative outlet outside of outside of work as well whether it's doing 3d art whether it's learning music or doing cooking or you know all these other things yeah. as well that you know give you purpose and give you reason to stay creative I, th I think everyone in any field really should be finding some sort of creative outlet yeah especially i would say with the state of the industry at the moment it's a good idea to look for other stuff to be secure in a way for me yeah. i don't think it's necessarily the security but just like you were saying the creative control being your own boss like you were saying oh well that's awesome you're getting me pumped up even though it's night time <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> I didn't even touch on half the stuff I wanted to talk to. I feel like it was really good to get your insight on stuff. And okay. I feel like we've kind of got, we're on a bit of a similar path as well. So social media wise and, you know, putting stuff out there and everything. So it's cool to, you know, tap into what you're thinking and hopefully, you know, I can help you and you can help me in the future with social media stuff. And yeah, I think I we're both just to. trying to find our feet. Yeah. I would love to. I feel like you know how in like the algorithm or not the algorithm, but like, I feel like you have a better understanding of how it works than I do. I have no I idea. <laughs> Or I guess you have the good recipe. There's something I feel like you're doing really good because you've been doing it constant, constantly, like consistently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In a way that I don't know if you're burned out by it, but you, you seem very good. You seem like at peace. I feel I'm like close. you're doing it, yeah. you know, in a way yeah. that's very calm. That's very like in control. Well, it's like for me, I'm coming back from like a big break. So yeah. We're on different paths. I'm, I'm tricking everyone to thinking I've got it all under control, but yeah. <laughs> No, we'll just keep growing. We'll get there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm also very pumped to get started with my day. I'm like, yes, that was a great, that was a great start. <laughs> Sick. Thanks. Thanks again. But we'll definitely have to do it again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Keep you posted and you keep me posted as well. Will do. Alrighty, catch up. Thank you.